Good day to everyone. This afternoon, we are going to talk about the computer system hardware. But before that, let us first define the things that you need to attain by the end of this lesson. First, you should be able to identify the types of computer hardware. Second, you should be able to classify the computer hardware according to its type. But before that, these materials and equipment shall be present in your workspace in order for you to start this lesson. Prior to our discussion proper, let us first activate some prior knowledge you have. To do this, I want you to answer, the, to answer this question. What do monitors, keyboard, mouse, and speakers have in common? Please take a look on the picture. For your analysis, why is it important that you will know the different classifications of the computer hardware? Now let us proceed with our discussion proper. Now computer hardware are the physical or the tangible aspect of a computer system, which means to say that tangible means to say you can see and you can touch. Any devices from a computer system where you can see and you can touch we refer to it as computer hardware. Now, a computer hardware can be classified according to its basic function, which can be further classified into input hardware, processing hardware, output hardware, storage hardware, and we have your communications hardware. Please take note that we have five classifications of computer hardware according to its use. Now let us first start with your input hardware. Presented here are the different examples of an input hardware. Now when we say input hardware, we refer this to the different external devices that provides information and instruction to the computer system. So if we try to say class that these devices provide information and instruction to, to the computer system, it means to say that there is a movement of the computer from the outside world going to the inside of the computer. So the data comes in to the computer system through the use of input hardware. Hence, this hardware fed data into the computer system. Example of this input hardware is what we call a keyboard. Now when you say class a keyboard, I guess you are very much familiar of what a keyboard is. This keyboard is an example of a text input device used mainly for typing a text into the computer system by pressing buttons on it, called keys. Now, class key, a keyboard is just one example of an input device. Another example we have class are what we call your pointing devices. Are you familiar class with the different pointing devices you have from your computer system? Now, take a look on these examples. When you say pointing devices, these are used to point and select objects from your screen. It could be a light pen, mouse, touch screen, and a touchpad. Now, mouse class was first invented by Douglas Engelbart in the year 1962. An example of a mouse is we have what we call class your optical mouse, and which are now commonly used as of today. Wherein when you say optical mouse, it uses light technology. The word itself will make us understand that it uses light technology. The word optics. Optics means technology or we'll say optics means light. I mean to say when you say optical mouse, it uses lasers or the light emitting diodes to track the surface under it and determine its motion, wherein this motion is, of, is translated into screen movements. Now, a mouse class can be an optical mouse or it could be a trackball, okay? When you say trackball, it has a protruding ball, has in a socket that detects the rotation of two axes. So, this is sample class of a trackball. So, we have here a, prot a protruding ball which can be moved in any direction or which can be rotated in two different axes for you to move the cursor from your screen. Then a side class from a optical mouse and a trackball 
Another printing device we have is what we call class your light pen. Now a light pen class is a stylus with a sensitive tip which is used to draw directly on a computer screen. Okay, this is a sample class of a light pen. Or shall we say class a stylus. And they are commonly used class in a touch screen enabled device which allows you to draw something using a pen more or less a stylus. Now another input device we have is what we call class your touch screen. At the nowadays class, our computer screen are becoming more interactive which allows you to point and select objects right from your computer screen. And this is made possible with the use of touch screen. So when you say class touch screen, it is it is a display which has a touch sensitive trans a transparent panel covering on screen which allows you to point and select objects directly from your screen and then take note class that most laptops as of today have built-in touchpad which is also a small sensitive pad for your screen so touch screen class again we are very much familiar with this input hardware they are commonly used in touch enabled devices like your smartphones, these are touch screen. Another input device class is what they call your microphone. Now, we mainly use microphone class to capture voice of a person, voice or what they call sounds. Now, when you say microphone, it is an audio device made up of acoustic sensor that provides input by converting sound into electrical signals thereby allowing the computer to process the information captured. So mean to say class when you say microphone, it converts the sound captured into an electronic signal which the computer can process this data as an input to the computer system. Again, it converts sounds and audio into a format readable by computer. So the use of a microphone. Okay, another input devices class are what you call your joystick. Now, joystick class are a sample of gaming device. It is wherein it is a handheld stick that pivots around on one end to detect angles in two, uh, in two or three dimensions. Okay, this is a sample class of a joystick. This is how a joystick looks like. Now, another one class, another gaming device we have is what they call your gamepad. Now, a gamepad, it is still a handheld device that relies on the digits, especially the thumb, to provide input. So you, this is a plus of a gamepad, wherein you have to use your thumb to move your character once you play games, and especially when you use gamepad. So you have to make use of your thumb to rotate and navigate your character in your game play. Okay, another input of hardware we have are the image and video devices which includes class your image scanner, barcode reader, and we have your webcam. Now let us take a look first on image scanner. When you say class image scanner, it provides input to a computer system by analyzing text, images, or objects. So it is mainly used to class to create an electronic copy of an image that can be stored in a computer system. So, it translates class, if you have your old photo, if you want to create a soft copy of your old photograph, you can use an image scanner to scan this image and can be stored directly on your computer system. Now, and also again, you can create an electronic copy of an image that can be stored in a computer system. And this is how your image scanner looks like. Well, another input hardware we have class are what we call your barcode readers. When you say bar barcode readers, they are mainly used in many checkout retail stores. Okay, if you notice class, when you go to Prince, Kayunda, or in Metro, you are using these barcode readers to read the prices of an item we bought from the store. Okay, so when you say barcode readers, this is a photo electric scanner that reads the vertical zebra stripe marks printed on containers, on product of containers. 
Okay? So each line class corresponds to a specific number. So every item we bought in store has its corresponding barcode number or barcode which will give them their identity. So as we do checking, it reads the barcode from the barcodes on the product and then it will display the price for easier checkout. Again, they are commonly used in many checkout retail stores. Now, another important input hardware we have to ask are what we call your webcam. Okay, this is how a webcam looks like. And this is the model of the camera or the webcam which I am using right now, the A4Tech webcam. Now, when we do video calling, we normally use a webcam to capture our video. Now, why is it called webcam? Okay, it is called a webcam because they are mainly used to capture video while we do or this video are designed to be transferred over the internet. Hence, class, they are optimized for data transfer over the internet. Now, uh, why specialized? It's, uh, it is because, class, a webcam is a low-resolution video camera. Again, class, take note that it is a low resolution. You might ask, why is it very, uh, why is it that webcam has a very low resolution? Okay, they are designed to be low resolution so that the file will not be big enough to travel across the network. Why does it have to be done that way? Okay, so mean to say class, if you have a high resolution camera, used for video conferencing, it will consume much of your bandwidth. So say for example, if you have only, if you have a mobile data plan which allows you to consume 2 gig of data per day, and then you are trying to do a video call wherein your partner uses a high resolution camera, what will happen is that uh, the data coming from your partner's camera is high resolution, it will consume much bandwidth going to your network. So on his side, it will consume much data to transfer this data into the internet. So if your partner will consume much bandwidth, and what do I mean when you say bandwidth? When we say bandwidth, it is the amount of data that a network can hold without compromising its network operation. So many to say class, the more or the higher the resolution of your camera used for communication, the more data you consume in communication. So say for example, uh, let's try to invert the example we have. If you are using a high resolution camera while you do video conferencing, it means to say class that much of your data are consumed in transmitting this data over the internet. So your, your 2 gigabyte of data for the day is easily consumed because you transmit a large amount of data as you do video conferencing. Hence, a web camera is optimized for this function. To do video calling and video conferences, we use webcam. But then again, class, if you want to have a high resolution video over your video conferences, you can make use of your phone instead of a web camera. And then a webcam class, it is a low resolution camera which captures our video so that the data traveling in our network will not be big enough for this data to travel across the network. Again. When you say bandwidth, it is the amount of data that travels in a network without compromising its network operation. The higher your resolution of your video, the more bandwidth you consume. Hence, other users cannot use your network because all of, your, all of the bandwidth was consumed by you or you consume all of its bandwidth for your data conferencing or when you do video conferencing. Hence, a webcam plus are optimized for this operation. Now let's proceed with your processing hardware. 
why is it called processing hardware? Okay. Now, the major role class of this processing hardware is to retrieve, interpret, and execute software instructions. Again, they are meant to retrieve, interpret, and execute software instruction. And then the major parts of a processing hardware are your system unit and your processing and your central processing unit. Now, let us take a at this one by one. Let us start class with your system unit. Okay? When you say class system unit, this is the principal processing element of a computer system. So, I'm going to say class, it houses all other elements in your processing software or in your processing hardware. So, this is how your system unit looks like. Take note class that your system unit houses your motherboard. And right from your motherboard, you can see here your CPU and your random access memory as well as your read-only memory. And then inside your system unit class is that we have your power supply. Its name itself or its name denotes that this component supplies electricity to other components of your system unit. So, mean to say class, if your system unit is damaged, don't expect that your computer system will turn on because there is no electricity being distributed to, uh, to all other components of your computer system. So, hence class, if your system, if your power supply is damaged, you need, uh, you need to replace this one. Okay, this is how your power supply looks like. And again class, it is inside of your system unit. Okay? Another component class of your system unit is what we call your motherboard or what we call class your system board. And as, and as I have said earlier, your motherboard class houses your central processing unit as well as your main memory. Okay? This is how your motherboard looks like. There are slots class for your read-only memory as well as for your uh, CPU and for your random access memory. Okay? Now, one important component class inside your motherboard is what you call your central processing unit. Why is it called central? It's because class, it is responsible or it is the center for data processing. Okay? Now, your CPU is again responsible for data processing which will convert data into an information and it is being called down by heat sink and a fan and then the main components of a cpu are control unit and your arithmetic logic unit now take note class that as we use the computer system this cpu gets very hot okay and as we have known that in the previous uh, in, the, in the generations of computer or in today's use if an object gets very hot, it is more prone for it to damage, okay? So, what do we do para, uh, to prevent this from happening, okay? Now, we have your heat sink and a fan to cool down your CPU, okay? Heat sink, class, heat sink are made up of aluminum. You might ask why aluminum. It is because, class, aluminum is a good conductor of heat. It is a leak conducts heat at the same time it dissipates heat easily meaning to say class madali siyang mag uminit at saka madali din siyang lumalamig okay so that's one good property of aluminum making it use or making it suitable for use as a heat sink in your cpu to prevent the cpu from overheating now if you have known class um, some of your laptops if the fan gets activated at a long period of time, your computer might, might shut down, okay? You might wonder, why does my laptop shut down, okay? The answer for this one is that uh, it is because your CPU gets very hot, okay? And your laptop is, is designed in a way such that when the temperature has been reached, when a certain temperature is attained by your uh, CPU, 
it will automatically shut down to prevent your computer from being damaged due to overheating of your CPU. Okay? Therefore, if your computer shut, shuts down and you feel that the back panel of your laptop is already very hot, try to cool it down first before using to avoid overheating or to avoid your, your laptop from being damaged. Okay? That's one tip to protect your laptop. Again, class, inside your CPU are your control unit and your arithmetic logic unit. Now, your control unit class is, is the so-called your nucleus of your processor. Why nucleus? Okay? It is because this control unit is responsible for the interpretation of program instructions and directs internal operations such as the flow of your input devices to and from your memory. I mean to say, class, your control unit regulates the flow of instruction within your central processing unit or within your CPU. Thus, it is called as control because it regulates the flow of instructions in your central processing. What about your arithmetic logic unit? Why is it called arithmetic logic unit? Now, the its name itself class will help us understand that it will do arithmetic operations, okay? What are those arithmetic operations, operations that you have known? Most basic are the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Meaning to say, class, when you say arithmetic logic unit, it is responsible for performing mathematical operations as well as logical comparison. So it do logical comparison, uh, comparison of data, such as and and or. Then we also have class, it can perform mathematical operations okay so those are your uh, different types or different examples of processing hardware now we have class your storage hardware and why are they called storage hardware this because class their task is mainly to store data okay as presented class are examples of storage hardware now your storage hardware class is responsible for providing permanent storage and information and programs for retrieval by the computer. Again, it is mainly concerned with how information can be stored and retrieved on a computer. Now, there are actually two types class of storage hardware. It can be a primary storage hardware or it can be a secondary storage. Again, a storage hardware can be primary storage or it can be a secondary storage okay for the meantime let us first define what are the characteristics of these two different storage hardware now let's talk first class your primary storage why is it called primary okay your primary storage class are your read-only memory as well as your random access memory so those are the two examples class of your primary storage your primary storage class are, are also known as your computer's main memory. Okay? Again, that, that is also known as your computer's main memory. And then it is a computer chip that stores data for processing instruction, for processing the data, and for quick retrieval by the CPU. Okay? So, I mean to say, class, a primary storage is a high speed storage device. High speed it is because class data from your CPU are processed at a tremendous amount of time. Okay, it is it has a very high processing speed. Therefore, if your storage hardware is slow, it will also slow down the performance of your CPU. Hence, all other operations are also being slowed down. Therefore, we need class a very high um, high processing or high a uh, high retrieval rate of uh, data storage device to meet the data processing operation or the, to meet the data processing speed of your CPU. And then it enables a computer to store data and programs temporarily. Middle say class, data stored in your primary memory or primary storage are just stored temporarily. Okay? And either this primary storage can be random access memory or it can be a 
read only memory okay and they are basically used for storing uh, your read only memory and your random access mem uh, random access memory are typically used for storing information that operates the computer program and at the same time, your primary storage also contains critical information and software that must be available for computer operation like operating system and your BIOS. And then take your class that uh, one of these memory is volatile while other is non-volatile. Okay? Now your read-only memory your ROM are what we call non-volatile and again it contains critical information and software that must be permanently available hence we call it as read-only read-only class means to say you cannot modify any contents of this memory because it is termed as read-only you can only see this data but you cannot modify or delete any data stored in your read-only memory because it contains class software and information that uh, which must be permanently available for computer operation like your operating system and BIOS. Okay. Why uh, why is it called class non-volatile type of memory? It is because class non-volatile because this stores data permanently. Whenever class the power is being removed or the computer is turned off, this type of memory still retains its data. I mean to say, even though your computer system doesn't have electricity, the data is still there. Okay? Unlike with your uh, random access memory class, wherein if you remove the electricity, all other information stored from your random access memory will get removed or will be deleted out of its memory since it is uh, since your random access memory cannot store data permanently we call it as volatile the okay, volatile class it means to say that uh, your computer your memory can only store data so long as it has an electric an electricity or electric power if the electric power is removed then all data and information stored in your random access memory are also removed okay hence we call it as volatile type of memory whereas your read-only memory are non-volatile type of memory okay so aside class also again those are your primary memory wherein it could be uh, hmm, it could be a random access memory or it could be a read-only memory again ram that is volatile type of memory while room is non-volatile whenever the data is uh, whenever the electric, the electric power is removed the room still retain its data but then you cannot modify any data from there but then your uh, right from your random access memory you can store data from there as compared with your RAM, okay? Uh, as compared with your ROM. ROM, you cannot modify any data from there. But from your random access memory, you can modify con its content. But then the only problem here is that once electric power is removed, all data are also removed from its memory, okay? Next classes are what you call your secondary storage. Your secondary storage are also known as these drives okay your secondary storage class allows users to store data or information permanently okay they are stored class in permanent basis why permanent it is because class even though the electric power is removed this type of memory still retain its information okay as compared to RAM that in RAM whenever your electric, uh, electric power is removed all information are also removed and as compared to your read-only memory once you uh, in your read-only memory you cannot save any data from there because it is called read-only because you, you can only 
to view the data from there, but you cannot modify any data from there. Pero, but then, class, in your secondary storage devices or sorry, secondary storage hardware, you can store data permanently. Okay? And also, they are known as these drives. And then take note class so that your secondary storage devices are separate from your CPU, okay? They are only attached to your computer's motherboard and they are not connected with your CPU. And then we have our types class of disk drives, again. Types of disk drives we have, it could be a hard disk drive, a USB flash drive, a CD, or it could be a DVD, okay? Let us talk them one by one. Let us start with your hard disk drive. When you say class hard disk drive, this is a permanent part of your computer system that stores large amount of data which can be quickly retrieved. Okay? Common computers class or common computers uh, hard drive capacity includes 120 gigabytes of data. Others also have 250. But then if you're using class uh, solid state device or the SSD hard disk drive, it can only store a smaller, like 50 gig, 100 gig, and it already costs much. You might wonder, why are SSD more expensive as compared to HDD? Okay? HDD, uh, HDD class stands for hard disk drives, whereas SSD stands for solid state device. Okay? SSD are much expensive as compared to your hard drive or hard disk drive, it is because class SSD provides a higher access time as compared to your hard disk drive. Mean to say class, higher access or lower access time, I mean. Mean to say class, it can quickly retrieve data in a shorter period of time as compared to your hard disk drives. Okay? And hard disk drives class are also prone for crashes because it contains like of much light of your cylinders, which will rotate at a very high speed. Once your, your computer crashes, there is a tendency that your data will get corrupted. Whereas, if you use SSD, there's no way for your computer or for your storage device to crash because there are no, there are no rotating devices as compared to your hard disk drives. Okay? They are much expensive, but then you can quickly retrieve data. Hence, our laptops nowadays are shifting from hard disk drives to SSD drives because it provides a higher access, a lower access time. At the same time, it is not prone for crashing up your storage device because there are no rotating parts. Okay, so this is how your hard disk drives looks like is a hard drive of your computer system. Well, another example class of your secondary storage devices are flash drives, okay? You might call them USB, but the technical term here is what you call your flash drives. You might answer, you might argue why uh, why is it called or why are we not supposed to call it as USB? It is because class the term USB is just ref uh, just refer to an interface right from your uh, right, right from the back panel of your computer's hard drive or in, a, in your system unit. There is there an interface, a universal serial bus interface where our flash drives get inserted. Sometimes we call it, at, uh, sometimes again, we call it as USB. It is because these devices are inserted directly to our USB interface. The interface class is what we call USB, but then the device that is inserted to our USB interface is what we call your flash drives, okay? But in layman's term, it is acceptable to use USB, but technically, we call that one as your flash drives, okay? In the say class flash drives, these are storage medium that comes with a USB interface, which are typically small, removable, and Rewritable. Again, these devices are inserted into your USB interface of your computer system, whether it be laptop or a desktop. Then they are very small, which allows one to carry them around for more portability. But then the problem is that 
since they are lightweight and portable, there is a tendency that these flash drives can be misplaced. And while this, uh, while your flash drive has been misplaced, you already lost your data. Okay. Then another storage devices we have class, or the secondary storage devices we have, are what we call your CD and DVD. CD stands for compact disc, while DVD stands for digital, digital versatile disc. Okay? Both have the same dimension, but then they only differ in their storage capacity. Perhaps class a CD can only store up to 300 MB or 700 megabytes of data. Whereas DVD can store as much as 8 gigs or even our 4 gigabyte of data. Hence, class, your DVD can store a larger amount of data as compared to your CD. Okay, this is how your CD and DVD looks like. But in another class, they have the same dimension. They only differ in their storage capacity. A DVD can store much larger data as compared to your compact disk. Okay? Another type of output hardware we have class are what we call your output hardware. Why are they called output hardware? Okay? They are called class output hardware because these devices are designed to produce results of computers' data processing. Okay? After the data has been processed, it will be produced by its output hardware. Examples of these output hardwares are your monitors, printers, plotters, and speaker. Okay? Let's get to know each one of these output hardware. Again, when you say output hardware, these are external devices which transfers information from computer CPU to computer use. So if an input device class, there is a moment of data from the outside world to the inside of a computer system, your output hardware moves the data from inside of the computer to the outside world. Okay? Input from the outside world to the inside of your computer. Output from the inside of your computer to the outside world. So that is how your output hardware works. It transfers the data from the computer's CPU to its user. Now there are actually two forms of output. It could be a soft copy or it could be a hard copy. Well, uh, what you are watching now, when you watch a video from your monitors or from your smartphone, that is a sample of a soft copy. Okay? It is called soft copy class because this form of output cannot be physically touched. Whereas a hard copy is an output produced which can be physically touched. In the same class, you can see and you can touch this hard copy. Say for example, when you print the lecture materials I have, or when you print class your your modules, which you have downloaded from our e-learning portal, that is now an example of a hard copy because you can now touch or you can now physically touch this object. Whereas class, we only view the videos we have, or you only view the PowerPoint presentation I have made, that is just a soft copy because you cannot directly touch these things. Whereas when you when you print this lecture materials we have, it is now called as hard copy because it can be physically touched. Okay? Now there are two types class, uh, there are types of monitor. It could be a CRT, L C D and L E D. But in technical class that CRT are now getting very old and they are now being replaced with L C D and L E D devices. And even class um, LCD devices or LCD monitors are now being replaced with LED monitors because it is more energy efficient compared to LCD and CRT monitors. Okay, And LED are now getting popular in the field of electronics. And again, LED now has now becoming more popular type of monitor as it is the most energy efficient as compared to LCD and CRT monitor. Okay, this is how your monitor and LCD or shall I say the LED monitor looks like. Again, plus LED monitor, it provides a more crisp data or more crisp image as compared to LCD monitor. And they are more energy efficient as compared to CRT and LCD monitors. 
Now, another form class of output hardware we have are what we call class your sound card, sound card and speakers. Now, does it produce hard copy or soft copy? Okay. Can you physically touch your sound? Okay. Of course, definitely not. So, since you cannot physically touch this output, we refer to, us, to it as soft copy. So, your sound card class and speaker are used to produce soft copy and specifically, they are designed to produce sounds coming from your computer system. Again, they are used to play sounds coming from the computer system. And this is a sample class of your sound card. Now, what is a sound card? Now, a sound card class allows you to uh, allows a computer to transmit sounds to its interface. Okay, we have your interface wherein you can plug in your earphones or headphones for you to hear the sounds produced by your computer system, and it is done by your sound card. And your speakers class. This is a device which will actually produce sounds. Okay? It produces sounds where you can directly hear from these devices. Now, another output hardware we have class which produces a hard copy are some are what we call your printers. Okay? Printers class, it is used to produce a hard copy of your of a given object. Okay? It can produce a hard copy. It, can, it puts text or computer-generated image in a piece of paper through printing. And then since this output can be physically touched and see, we call it as hard copy. Okay? Those files stored in your uh, flash drive are referred to as soft copy because you cannot physically touch these objects. Whereas when you print these materials, we now refer it as hard copy because this output can be physically touched and can be seen. Now there are three major types class of printers. A printer can be dot matrix, inkjet, or a laser printer. Now dot matrix printers are known as impact printers and only print in two colors, wherein your output class can only be black and white. Now, these dot matrix are commonly used in uh, organization which produces carbon copy of their printouts. Say, for example, class, your payroll department. In your payroll department, it produces, uh, it uses a carbon copy of your uh, payroll so that you have your file at the same time you also have your copy. Hence, we make use of dot matrix printer to create a duplicate copy using carbon paper okay now uh, when it comes class to its quality comparing the three dot matrix inkjet and laser printer it is the dot matrix which has the lowest quality when it comes to output now next to next to dot matrix class is what we call your inkjet printer your inkjet printer uses uh, inks to print document in the say class it is now an ink tank, wherein this tank can be refilled with the printer's specified ink once it has all gone out. Okay. And then comparing the three, it is the laser experience, uh, it is it is the laser printer which produces the highest quality of output. And then since it produces the highest quality, as expected, it is more expensive as compared to your inkjet and your dot matrix printer, okay? That, when you say again, class, dot matrix are impact printers and they are used to create carbon copies of your document. Whereas uh, inkjet and laser printers, these are non-impact printers, okay? I mean to say, class, non-impact, it doesn't leave any traces of characters at the back. So that matrix, when you touch the, sur the back surface of your band paper, the, uh, it has some traces of characters due to its uh, moving needle. Okay. So this is the example of your uh, dot matrix printer. This is Epson. And the organ class used commonly in accounting purposes and payroll offices.
Then we also have your dot may uh, your inkjet printer. Inkjet class it uses inks to produce output. Then between the three printers, it is the laser printer which produces the highest quality of output. Then another output device we have class are what we call your plotter. Now plotter are commonly used for drawings on a piece of paper where precision is mandatory. In the same class, it requires high precision of output. Okay? And they are typically used in the field of engineering. Okay, this is how this is how your plotter looks like. And then lastly, last uh, last type of communi communications uh, last type of hardware we have class are what we call your communications hardware. Now, communications hardware are developed or needed in order for the computer to communicate another computer over the internet or in a network. Again, these devices or a computer, they are used to communicate between two or more computers across a network. Uh, wherein, when you create a network, it will require you to have some devices and equipment like cables, modem, router, hubs, and switches okay and this again these devices which allows you to communicate between two or more computers are referred to as communications hardware hence again class it allows your computer to communicate with other computers using these devices it could be LAN cables RJ45 network card your modem your Wi-Fi router and your USB Dangle. So there are still a lot more of communications hardware to be talked once we have our lecture on computer networks. Let's assure the class that they are also part of our lesson. Okay. So again, to recap, we have just talked the different types of computer hardware. We have your input hardware, processing hardware, you have your storage hardware and then we all have also your output hardware and then finally we have your communications hardware input hardware need to say it captures data from the outside world going to the inside of your computer system your output hardware examples of which are keyboard mouse touch screen keyboard light pen stylus microphone those belongs to input hardware again class when you say input it captures data from the outside world to the inside of the computer now we also have aside from input hardware we also have your processing hardware so the, the role of processing hardware is to store or is to retrieve process is to retrieve data and to process data okay example of which are your system unit and your motherboard CPU, those are samples of your processing hardware together with your power supply. Then for your storage hardware, it could be primary or secondary. Primary, these are your computer's main memory, which includes your RAM or read-only memory and your random access memory. Room class, that is non-volatile. At the same time, you cannot edit any data in your room. RAM is editable, but then it can only store data as long as it has electric power. Once electric power is removed, then all of this information are also removed. RAM is non uh, volat is RAM is volatile while room is volatile or room is non volatile. Then when it comes to secondary storage hardware, it stores data permanently. It could be your flash drive, CD, DVD, and memory cards and other stuff. Then you also have class your communications hardware, which allows the computer to communicate to other computers in a network. It could be your modem, packet Wi-Fi, your router, LAN cables, RJ45, hubs, and switches. More of these topics class for communications hardware will be discussed when we proceed with our lesson on computer networks. So I guess that's all for today, and thanks for watching. If you have questions, please ask them now and drop me so I can answer your questions. Again, thank you and have a good day.